morning. Welcome to worship on this, I said beautiful at the early service, there was more blue. On this day God has given us to gather inside together around God's word and at God's table over a great distance for those who are with us online that we can be filled and fed and then sent out into the world with the grace and mercy God gives so abundantly. A special welcome if you are a guest with us this morning. We're so glad you're here and we pray that Christ will be present with you as he promises to be every time two or three of us gather in his name. Just a few notes. There are yellow cards in the back of the row in front of you. If you've got a prayer request, you can jot that down and hand to an usher, and they'll make sure that those make their way forward for inclusion in our prayers. If you are gathering with us by live stream, you can add that into the comments, and we'll make sure that it comes our way. This is a full day full of celebration as we finish our um, series on stewardship and generosity, full of uh, joyful music and just all kinds of good things. So we rise to begin our worship with a time of confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Held in God's mercy. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are worshiping with one of our younger folks this morning, note that their line comes up in just a moment. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Young folks, together we say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be We pray. Lord of the new covenant, in Christ you draw all people to yourself. May we die with him to the powers of hate and let him show us a world loved by you. Through Jesus Christ, the fruitful grain. We have a few friends this morning. Good morning, everybody. So, through uh, these purple weeks that we call Lent, right? We've been using purple in our colors and our decorations and such like that. Um, every week, we've been talking about or hearing about promises. And particularly, we've been hearing about how God makes promises to people. God makes promises to us. And so we've heard in these first readings about uh, when God made a promise to Noah and to his family and to us. Remember that after the big flood, God took God's war bow, you know, the kind that you shoot with, and hung it in the clouds and said, I will never destroy all life again, right? And that's our rainbow. We heard about how God picked two really unlikely and not very pleasant people named Abram and Sarai, who become Abraham and Sarah. And God said, I'm picking you, and through you, 
I'm going to bless the whole world so the whole world can know who I am. We, remember, we heard about God's uh, promise on the mountain as to right after God had taken the people out of uh, Egypt where they were enslaved and brought them to this mountain. Then God sort of sat on the mountain and talked to them and told them, I've chosen you. I am your God. And then told them what uh, the family looks like. Here's what it looks like. To, to be loved by me. And that's our, what we call our Ten Commandments and uh, all of the other instructions that God gives. Over and over and over again, we've heard these crazy promises because it doesn't make a whole lot of logical sense for God who creates everything in the universe to promise God's self to us with really hardly anything on our side, Right? It's God making a promise, and it really doesn't depend on us. It's not, if you be good, then I'm going to bless the world through you. God says, this is what I'm doing, and I'm choosing you. God makes promises this way, and today we hear yet another promise. Now, um, think about promises for a second. You've probably had people make a promise to you and then maybe not fulfill it or break that promise, kind of let you down? What did that feel like? Happy? Hard? Yeah? Kind of sad that they would do that? You Disappointed, maybe? Yeah? Kind of hurts your heart a little bit, too. It depends on the promise. But if it's somebody really important to you, maybe it's, it's going to really kind of get in there, right? It kind of it stings a little bit. In the reading today, God talks about this, and it turns out that God's love for us is so strong that when we don't sort of uh, live a life like we're loved by God, it hurts God. It breaks God's heart. And so God, here in this promise, says, that's it. <clears throat> It, I, I, we are going to do something new, and instead of me teaching you about being prom, uh, having a promise from me, I'm going to write it down in your heart. I'm going to write it on your heart and soul so that it's just who you are. Now, I do not think necessarily that if we were to take one of those little telescopy thingies and put it in, we'd see like a tattoo on like our heart muscle. I don't think it's that. But somehow, God is putting in there, in the heart, in the middle of who we are, that we are loved by God. And then together, we have each other to learn how to live that way and what it means for us. So, listen for the promise here in just a second when God says, I'm going to, well, not tattoo it, but he's going to say, I'm going to get it right into the middle of you because that's how much I love you. Okay? Thanks for coming up. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, <clears throat> chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and they said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. 
now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I learned this week about a tradition among some of the churches in our country um, a while back that when they would build the church and they'd put in the pulpit, that they'd put a plaque on the pulpit quoting from today's gospel. So the pulpit where the preacher preaches, except for me apparently, but um, here would be a plaque that was, the preacher could see every time they went to begin their sermon, and it quoted from the gospel and said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And there's a lot about that that I like. Well, there are some things about this that I like. This idea that our sharing time here, that sermons are really more about being introduced to Jesus and getting to know who Jesus is than they are about things to memorize, things to remember, doctrine, dogma, all that kind of thing. That preaching at its best is a time for us together to get to know who Jesus is since we are the ones who have said we follow him. We should probably figure out who he is. But not only that, following is also about being disciples, that is being life apprentices. So learning from Jesus how to live as though Jesus would if he were living our lives. It's how we grow closer to Jesus and follow Jesus wherever he goes. So there's something about this that I like very much, but there are also three really big problems with it. One of them is quite obvious. The second one you need some, we need some context for. And the third one is probably the most important thing we're going to hear today. So number one, you probably spotted it right away, and that's the gendered language. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. This was in a time in this country when the church had not yet figured out that they had made the mistake of baptizing everybody and that the gifts of baptism from the Holy Spirit are universally applied each to each. And so the gifts of leadership, the gifts of, uh, of, of spirituality, the gifts of uh, uh, reflection and prayer, the gifts of caring about God's people are not biologically determined. The church had not quite figured out that the, the preacher's job is to love God and love people and hold them together, and there's no biological requirement to that. Now, we can, and so we know now that this wording would be much better to say, hey, you, we wish to see Jesus. Here at this church, we can giggle about this a little bit because since our founding, we have been a church that, uh, it, that appreciates, explores, and supports leadership of women. And so I know that one of the most dangerous things we could do would be to try to take away our Pastor Erica, Caitlin, our youth director, Jen, our director of preschool, Jen, our parish administrator, Heather, our business manager, and good luck trying to tell Pastor Jane over there that she cannot serve God and love God's people. I'm pretty sure there'd be riots in the street, things on fire, the, you know, cars flipped over and all that stuff. So we can laugh a little bit about this. And so maybe we, the plaque should read, hey you, hey you, we wish to see Jesus. Now the second thing, we need a little bit of context to be able to hear it and to see what's going on here. First thing is, this is in the Gospel of John. 
And the way that John tells the story of Jesus and Jesus' ministry puts us here in Jerusalem at the Passover. And this is getting to the point, this is um, uh, right after Palm Sunday's procession with the palms and the coats on the street and all the people crying, Hosanna, all that kind of stuff. Here at the end of Lent, time gets, chronology gets a little weird. So this is actually a little bit after next week, but we're hearing it this week. Yeah, anyway. So here we have Jesus has come into Jerusalem with the donkey and the coats and the palms and the Hosanna and the kids dancing, and he's coming to the temple. And he has this encounter. And this encounter, people coming to see him and saying, Sir, we, hey, you, see what I did? Hey, you, we wish to see Jesus, is what tells Jesus. And he responds by saying, okay, now it's time to die. What is it about this that tells Jesus that his hour has come and it's time to die? Well, we remember that throughout John, throughout the book of John, over and over again, Jesus has had these encounters where Jesus has said, my hour has not yet come. Back in John chapter 2, we had him at the wedding party with his mom, Mary, and they ran out of wine. You remember the story. And Mary came to Jesus and said, um, they're out of wine. And Jesus responds in a phrase and a verse that is the favorite of confirmation students of all time and everywhere. Woman, what is that to me and to you? Here it is. My hour has not yet come. Jesus going through his ministry, my hour has not yet come, my hour has not yet come, my hour has not yet come. Now, some people come to see him and he says, now's the time. Now it's time. It's time to die. And to hear a little bit of why, we need to know about language. So, we know, we know, don't we, that Jesus did not speak English, right? Go like this. In fact, Jesus did not even speak King James English. Go like this. Jesus lived 2,000 years ago in Palestine. Jesus was born a Jew. Jesus was raised a Jew. Jesus lived a Jew. Jesus taught as a Jew. Jesus uh, was a rabbi in the Jewish tradition. Jesus has just come into Jerusalem, the heart of the Jewish nation, and Jesus has come with all of the pomp and the symbolism and the metaphors of Jewish tradition. The donkey, the coats, the palms, the hosanna is a Hebrew word. Jesus comes comes into Jerusalem as a Jew because he is. He's born, lives, and dies a Jew. And being a Jew in Israel at the time means he spoke a language called Aramaic, which is a dialect and uh, neighbor to Hebrew, which is modern-day Hebrew is what's spoken in Israel today. Jesus spoke Aramaic, not English, Aramaic, and would have spoken that with all his friends. He comes into this temple that is the heart of Jewish tradition and the Jewish nation there called Judea by Rome. And while he's there, some folks who speak Greek come to see him. So Aramaic is the local language but because of Alexander the Great, who came in and knocked over all kinds of countries in that era in the past, a couple hundred years before, Greek was the spoken language of commerce. And so if you wanted to be able to trade with people or you went someplace out of Israel, people spoke Greek. And then, of course, there's Latin over in Rome, but Rome is a long ways away. And so ordinary people would, know, would speak Greek if they weren't sure that they knew Aramaic. And so Jesus, an Aramaic-speaking Jew, has some Greeks. Now, this is not folks from Greece the way we think of that are bringing, you know, flaming cheese and saying, opa. This is 
What this really means is Greek speakers, so these are educated elites outside of what we ought, what people ordinarily thought belong. And they've come to the temple to this very Jewish festival, Passover, because they've come to worship God. They are God-fearers, they are God-followers, they are come to worship, they just haven't done the full uh, snipping to become fully Jewish. And they've come to see Jesus. And to, to what they do is they find a Greek speaker named Philip. And to Philip they say, hey you, we wish to see Jesus. And Jesus has this response that says, okay, everything is in place. Because Jesus knows that God's plan and God's preparation has been so that his ministry, his life, his death, and his resurrection go out into all the world. And so when people outside ordinary boundaries are coming in, he knows the time is here. Everything is in place. It is time to take all the brokenness of the whole world and as he says in the gospel, when he is lifted up, he tells us how he's going to die. He will draw all people to himself. Everything is in place. All God's preparation. Now is the time. It's time to die. The third thing that we take from this gospel, and probably the most important thing we can hear today, is that this plaque that the churches put up on their pulpits, put it on the wrong side. It doesn't belong here. It really should be here. Because these Greek-speaking elites do not come to a professional church worker Asking to see Jesus. They don't even come to one of Jesus' innermost disciples, the ones who were there at the Transfiguration or others. They seek out Philip. Philip who has a Greek name, who we know comes from Bethsaida. So if we think of Jerusalem down here with the nation of Judea, we have Galilee up here. Bethsaida is kind of way up here, out at the outskirts of what would be considered Israel. And it is a largely, uh, there is a large Greek-speaking population there. Maybe Philip's native language was actually Greek. But they come and reach out to the person they know they can speak with who is like them, whose life they can relate to, and to them they say, hey, you, we wish to see Jesus. So the plaque is in the wrong place because this is being said to you. To you. Your friends are saying it to you. Your neighbors are saying it to you. Your classmates, your coworkers, the crazy person at the grocery store, the folks that you will see on the streets. They are not coming to pastors. They need, they are looking in the lives that they know and lives they can connect with. And they are saying to you, show us Jesus. Let us see how following Jesus is making a difference. 
Show us through how you behave and you make your decisions, you use your resources, how you work and how you treat others, how you uh, enter into life, the life we can see. Show us Jesus. We are dying for hope. We are desperate for mercy. We need justice and forgiveness. We are dying to know that we matter, that we are loved, and that life doesn't have to be the way that we're taught and shown on TV. Hey, you, we wish to see Jesus. Now, I know that to hear that makes you want to say, who, me? Yes, you. Because you are the ones beloved by Jesus, beloved of God, the ones who are following Jesus, getting to know Jesus here and with each other, whose lives are being changed by what you eat and drink where you put your hope, who you spend your time with, how you use your resources, all of that makes a difference. So, who, me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're the ones. It's time. Thanks be to God.
together we confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists who whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children, including Lutheran World Relief, ELCA World Hunger, and Lutheran Immigration Refugee Services. Tend to the lands, people, and churches of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Hear us, O God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation, especially our Stephen ministry and Caring Meals ministry. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Hear us, O God. God of faithfulness, you have promised not to give up on your world. You have promised never to leave or forsake your people. And so we entrust to you the cares of our world and our lives. All who are victims of violence in the Holy Land, in Haiti, in Ukraine. We entrust to you the broken hearts, the victims of anti-Semitism and other hate crimes. And we pray for an end. We pray for Wanda with a broken arm and Kim in the hospital, for Dave continuing to recover from a stroke. We pray for those in hospice care, for Cord, Joy, and Norma, for Julia, Francis, and Wilma. We pray for Paul and Margaret, Carrie, Stuart, Wanda, and Ken, for Wayne and Heather, Joy, Sally, and Katrina, for Luz Snoberto and their family, for Jimmy, Tim, Dawn, for Ms. Leonelli, Mike, and Linda, for Vicki, Sally, Ed, and Sarah, that you would grant healing, courage, and strength. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially Joseph, Patrick, Thomas Cranmer, and Jonathan Edwards. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. 
Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Throughout these uh, past several weeks, we've had the chance to hear from our siblings here at Christ Lutheran Church how responding to God's invitation has made a difference in their life. We've heard, uh, and today, we gathered up those stories and have the chance then to hear God's invitation to us as well. Crystal's going to lead us through that, and thank you, Crystal. Who stole the cookies from the cookie jar? You stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Who, me? Yes, you. Not me. Then who? Welcome. I'm so glad you are all here. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Crystal Ridley. I lead our stewardship team here at Christ Lutheran. And I bet you're wondering why I started with that silly rhyme. It reminds me of the many times that God has called me to do things. Each time I kind of look around and ask, who me? Each time his reply is, yes, you. <laughs> and I say, couldn't be. And he presses, then who? For the last few weeks, we have heard stories of who me moments. Each time we find that yet again, God has a plan for each of us. Jackie and Judy spoke about how they came to CLC and God invited them to breathe life back into our hospitality and outreach committee. They shared how meaningful and life-giving this ministry has been for them. It was brave and courageous as new members to say yes as Jesus asked them with, then who? The following week, John and Maya told us how being involved with ushering and serving has brought new joy to their growing faith in God. They shared how the simple act of serving God as ushers and answering his call brings joy and is fun, too. They encourage us to all find ways to get involved at CLC. Ushering is just one way to serve. Jesus asks, will you? Then last week, we heard how God called Diana and Valerie to Costa Rica. They spoke about how this vision trip changed not only their lives, but the lives of those they met along the way. They shared how, as a result of this trip, the Casa Adobe was able to start a fund that they were dreaming about to assist refugees, purchase a much-needed refrigerator, and through the connections they established, we are helping foster a Venezuelan family that will be making their way to Valparaiso. Here again, God in his amazing wisdom and plans called this trip to Costa Rica. As we look to the future and we ask, who me? Jesus presses us with, Will you? Christ Lutheran is where anyone questioning who me can find a place and a way to serve the Lord as he answers, yes, you. There are so many ways. Communion assistant, lector, cantor, funeral service, hospitality, Sunday school, VBS, gardening, property maintenance, Bible study, youth group, Lutheran world relief, and so much more. This church changes lives. I'm not sure if you've heard that before, but it does. It happens because of the generous beloveds in the pews and chairs right next to you, and those who are online, and those we haven't met yet. It happens because of you. Each time you say yes, you are furthering Jesus' ministry. Now, if you are a guest with us today, please don't feel uncomfortable that you joined us here on Commitment Sunday. Just know that we're a congregation that takes God's mission for us very seriously. And this is part of how we live and serve together. We'd love to tell you more about how we see God working through us. We also encourage you to think about your own giving, because being aware of how much God has given us and how what we give is our way of saying thanks. It is important and a big part of how we faithfully answer to God's call. Who, me? Beloved members, Please don't feel uncomfortable. We know there are faithful members throughout the church who are uncomfortable with making a statement of intent for their giving. If you struggle with this, please follow your conscience. I can attest that making a statement for my giving hasn't always been easy. It feels like a big commitment because it is. You are answering God. James and I started small and have grown each year. We have found that thinking intentionally about our giving has shown us how trusting, and, uh, trusting God and honoring our commitment to him helps shape our ever-growing faith. 
As you unfold your statement of intent, along the top, you will notice two charts. The bright green chart on the left-hand side highlights our hopes and how we can answer God's call for the ministry opportunities that God has put before us. The pea green chart on the right is a reference of how our offerings relate by week, month, and yearly total. Your gifts are personal and your response to God's goodness, therefore an expression of your gratitude to God. Thank you for praying on your generosity as you fill out your intent today. As you look further, you'll notice a few options. First, you may choose to use or continue using online giving through automatic withdrawals. It's easy, it's secure, and a lot of our members say that they really like that it's automatic. James and I do. We even have cards in the rows so that you have something to put in the plate each week. If you'd like to know more about it, our church staff are glad to help. Second, you may choose to give offerings in the offering plate or in the mail or the lock boxes outside the church office if you prefer. Third, you may choose online giving through the Christ Lutheran website. Please indicate which you prefer as you consider your gift and share with us your name and address. Thank you for the stability that you provide with your consistent contributions. I want to invite each family to fill out a statement of intent. Feel free to use the envelope to put them in if you wish. If you prefer not to indicate your giving specifically, please put other down and we will know that you intend to give as you are able. We invite you to put your name down simply because we really just want to be sure that everyone has had an opportunity to participate. And if you've already sent in yours or submitted online, thank you. Feel free to go ahead and write your name on another and you can just write online or in the mail so we know. Now, since the statement of intent is for the family, the cookie cards that were handed out are for each of us, including especially our kids. For everyone here in person, please share on your cookie one way that you intend to join in the flavor of fellowship as we ask ourselves, who me? Will you join in the men's shelter? Will you acolyte, choir, maintenance, or simply invite a friend to come to church with you? For those beloveds online, please use the live chat to post, yes, me, and share how you will join in the flavors of fellowship at CLC. It truly doesn't matter how you choose to join in or if you're feeling vanilla, chocolate chip, oatmeal, or macaroon, we welcome all flavors to join in Jesus' jar here at CLC. Take a moment to fill these out now. After a few minutes to work on them, Pastor Tim will lead us in prayer as we offer them to God. Remember, when you ask, who me? Jesus is answering, yes, you, my beloved. So, to summarize, please uh, look in your weekly scribe to find one of the statements of intent. They were handed out with all our bulletins. If you don't have one, let us know and we'll get one to you. If you need a pen, pencil, or things like that, and if you need another cookie, um, I don't remember what you call them, a cookie card, then um, we can bring those around too. We're going to take some moments of silence for you to pray and to think and to take a look at that. And then uh, as we sing, we're going to invite you, as you are ready, to come on forward and, um, and place your uh, statement of intent and your cookies in the basket here as part of our offering of worship. If uh, you would like some help bringing those up, we got a lot of kids with plenty of energy that would be glad to do that. You can just let us know by uh, holding, yep, he's all over this. So just hold up your hand if you want some help uh, getting those. So we're going to take some moments of silence. We're going to uh, think of pray we're going to pray together. And then as we sing, you're invited. We're, our goal is holy chaos. So we usually manage that. So take some time.
a statement of intent or a cookie card? All right. Let us pray. God, your word and your invitation bring life. We hear you drawing us closer and inviting us to be part of mission and ministry, changing lives here, in, through, and because of Christ Lutheran Church. We thank you, O God, for the gifts that you give us, and we uh, prayerfully offer up to you our response and our gratitude with our generosity, with our resources, with our time, with our talents, with our lives. Bless us, O God, so that we might draw closer to Jesus. Bless us, O God, so that others may come to know your love. Bless us, O God, because we love you and we long to serve you. Be for us strength and peace and mercy in all the things, and help us, O God, to show and share that with others. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.
is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Young folks, we invite everyone into prayer. We say, the Spirit makes us one. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Hey, you, we want to see Jesus. The world is waiting for us to show mercy, grace, and love. And we say, who, me? When we prepared for Holy Communion with our young folks last week, we reminded them that you are what you eat. We are given what we need in this meal and in God's word. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come.
gathered with us by live stream, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. We rise. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Please be seated for a few invitations in the uh, who, me sort of category. As Caitlin and um, Chris make their way forward, I'm going to invite you to find your purple scribe. There are all kinds of important things in there that include um, invitations to Holy Week worship already next week. Palm Sunday is next Sunday. Maundy Thursday and Good Friday services at 7 p.m. Good Friday at 1 p.m. and our Easter vigil, my favorite service of the year, at 4 p.m. You'll also find invitations to um, be of assistance to um, various ministries in the congregation, to our social ministry and our opportunity to host the men's overnight shelter. Our guests are coming soon, and there is a sign-up area in the gathering area. You'll find also a list of needs for the refugee family that we have come, um, a number of folks in the congregation and another, uh, other faith communities are working to welcome. There are lots of needs, and you can find... Um, QR codes there, but especially of, of urgent need is anyone who might have leads on good housing for a um, family with four children or vehicles that are used but functional that might be inexpensive or donated um, would be especially of interest. So those, I believe, are my invitations. Take it away. Hey, hey you. you. We, we are, are your hosts. hosts. I'm your host, Chris. And I'm your host, Caitlin. We surveyed 100 people and asked them what CLC Youth Ministries event they are most looking forward to, and survey says CLC Family Feud Night. On April 21st at 5 p.m., we hope that you will join the CLC Youth Ministries for a CLC Family Feud Night. Whether you want to compete on a team or come to watch in the audience, there is a place for you. Teams are made up of five individuals, and teams do not have to be of the same household. Anyone can be on your team. If you are registering a team, please designate one person to fill out the form and list all team members. If you would like to be on a random team, there is an option for that as well on the form. Teams are $50. Individuals who would like to participate but need to be placed on a team may register for $10 or $5 for ages 6 through 12. Spectator admission is $5. Pizza and snacks are included with the price of admission. The registration QR code can be found in the weekly scribe. Please complete the registration whether you have a pre-made team or are doing a random team or are participating, participating in the audience. Please register by April 14. Speaking of QR codes, you may notice that in your weekly scribe is another QR code related to CLC Family Feud Night. What's family feud without surveys? Mm -hmm. In order for this fundraiser to be possible, we are asking you, CLC community, to be a part of our survey respondents. The QR code will take you to a 36 question survey and should only take a few minutes. We ask that all answers be one word or short phrase responses. If you've always dreamed of being a part of the family feud surveys, well, mm -hmm. now's your chance. Please fill out the survey by April 7th at the latest. Thank you for supporting our youth ministries. We hope to see you all at the CLC Family Feud Night. Thank you so much. One final invitation is um, yet another page in your scribe. There was an event. Uh, there's okay. There's I'm second to last. There was an event um, a few weeks ago in downtown Valpo on the courthouse square where um, a, an individual was very proudly and loudly advertising for racism in our community. And a number of churches and faith leaders and people of faith will be gathering this afternoon in that same spot to pray for God's blessing on all of our neighbors to speak against this. And all are welcome, one o'clock on the courthouse square. 
Good morning. So a bunch of our youth and a group of other churches that we are joining with are going to National Youth Gathering this summer. You've all heard about it. Um, Valerie, Caitlin, and I are working on a way to share our experience with you guys. So we have created a Facebook page that you all can join. We are also working on an Instagram page. If that would be of interest, you can let me or Valerie, Caitlin know. We'll create it if it'll be enough people to join it. Um, so there is a Facebook page. It's titled Northwest Indiana NWI ELCA Youth Gathering Group. Um, it will be in the scribe next week info so you can join it. But we are just looking for interest so people can see what we are experiencing during the trip as we are on it in July. Yes, July. <laughs> so you can join that group and then we're good to go. <laughs> We'll make Thanks. sure that it makes it to the CLC Facebook page as well so that you can click a link from there. We rise for God's blessing. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you. God's face shine on you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Amen.